Greetings again today in the name of Jesus Christ, our wonderful Lord and Savior. Good to see you here in the auditorium of the Northside Baptist Church on this beautiful Lord's Day. We welcome every one of you. We appreciate our visitors. And good to see you in the house of the Lord. You out in the radio listening audience, we appreciate you tuning in to the Northside Baptist Church Hour that's coming to you live right from the auditorium here in Athens, Georgia, of the Northside Baptist Church. And this is Preach Edward speaking. We're hoping during the coming hour we can be an inspiration to you. And you out in the radio listening audience, if you have a phone there nearby, just get on that phone and call a friend. Have them to tune in and get the Northside Baptist Church Hour. And you'll do them a favor, and us as well. We appreciate it so very much. I want to give you some scripture to turn to. That's Ezekiel chapter 34. Turn there in John chapter 10. And then, of course, I'm going to quote the first verse of the 23rd Psalm. And you may turn there. While you're turning there, I'd like to say to the radio listen audience, we have our cassette tape available. And today's singing and message will be on cassette tape. And it will be tape number 150, tape number 150, The Shepherd and His Sheep. Now, if you'd like to have it, then you can write in for it. You can request it by number or by title. Now, these tape we send out for a gift of $3 for each tape. And the gift is used to help support this radio ministry. And we have many others, as you know, and they're available. If you'd like to have one of our brochures on our proposed Holy Land tour, request that also. You know, time is flying by. It won't be long until it'll be time to go. And if you're considering this tour, now is the time to start thinking about it and doing something about it. And if you'd like to have a brochure, request that when you write in. Maybe some of you'd like to send your pastor or your pastor and his wife. That'd be one of the greatest things you could do for them is send them on this tour to the Holy Land. We're going to talk today about the shepherd and the sheep and and that's one of the most fascinating scenes you'll see in the Holy Land. The shepherds on the side of the hill watching over their sheep like they did back in the days of Bible times and days of our dear Lord. My wife said it's one of the most beautiful scenes she saw over there. And it is very fascinating because they still do it in the same manner they did back in the days of Jesus. And it's a wonderful, wonderful trip. And so I'm going to read in just a moment from Ezekiel 34. And let me give you my mailing address. My mailing address is Virgil Edwards, P.O. Box 501, Athens, Georgia. The zip code number is 30603. I'd like to hear from you next week. We work us together in getting out the gospel. God gave the word. Great is the company of those that publish it. So you pray for me and write to me. As a minister one time, he, he trained his people to quote the 23rd Psalm and then he'd ask all of them to get up and there they would quote it in unison and then he got up one Sunday morning he said I want everybody to quote the 23rd Psalm but the good sister back there that gets to the still waters before we get to the green pastures would you please wait until we get there before you move on and so they believed in unison and doing it right didn't it now Ezekiel chapter 34 and beginning with verse 11. Ezekiel 34, verse 11, page 878. This is in the original Schofield Reference Bible. I do have uh, several of these Bibles on hand. I ordered a few to kindly accommodate the people if they're interested in an original Schofield Bible for Christmas or for a gift or for just for you need one, you want one to use. The real nice Bibles. And I'm not in the Bible selling ministry, but I try to keep a few on the ha on hand because I can save you about ten dollars on each Bible of that type. And uh, I do have a few if you're interested for Christmas. Maybe some of you wondering what in the world can I give my mother and dad or friend for a Christmas present? Maybe they're shut in, and you just wonder what to do. Why don't you get them a cassette cassette tape player so they can order the tape and all our other good tapes from ministers and good gospel singing and that tape player would be a real blessing to your mother and dad, your grandparents. They can get the tape and the many, many good tapes out today put out by great men of God that's available. It would be a blessing to you. And get them a good tape player. Be wonderful. 
All right, Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 11. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I even I will both search my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries and will bring them to their own land and feed them up on the mountains of Israel by the rivers and all the inhabited, inhabited places of the country. I will feed them in a good pasture and upon the high mountains of Israel shall their foal be. Thou shalt they lie in good foal and in fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel. I will feed my flock. I will cast them, or cause them rather to lie down, saith the Lord God. I will seek that which was lost and bring again that which is driven away and will bind up that which was broken. I will strengthen, uh, straighten that which was sick and I will destroy the fat and the strong and I will feed them with judgment. Now, of course, God is talking here about his people, Israel. Now, in Psalms chapter 23, David said, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Now, I know the Lord is your shepherd today if you're a child of God. In John chapter 10 and verse 11, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Now, the Bible likens sheep to God's people. The Bible likens goats to the unsaved or hogs to the apostates to the unsaved. But when the Bible talks about his sheep, God likens them to the people of God. Now, there's a reason for that. Now, we know the good shepherds kept their sheep out in the pastures and on the hillsides. And they would lead them along and those sheep would follow their shepherd. The sheep knew the voice of their shepherd. He could speak and they would follow him. Now, we, some time ago, we were traveling in the Holy Land and we saw several shepherds out on the hillside and they had different groups of sheep out there and the sheep began to mix and mingle. And one of the guests said to the guide, said, Now, there are those shepherds when they get ready to go into the fold. I uh, said, how are they going to separate the sheep? Said, they're kind of mixing up out there on the mountain side. And the guide said, that's no problem. Said, when that shepherd speaks, his sheep knows his voice and they follow him. When the other shepherd speaks, his sheep will do likewise and so on. And Jesus said that his sheep know his voice. And Genesis chapter 4 and verse 2, And she again by his brother Abel, and Abel is a keeper of the sheep. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. Now here we find the second son born on the earth became a keeper of the sheep. Now from that time until now, they keep those sheep over there in the land of Israel and in the Middle East in that area. And they watch after their sheep. Now Abel is a type of the death of a shepherd. He was a shepherd and he was put to death by his brother and of course his brother killed him and there because he didn't like what happened because God approved of Abel's offering and rejected his and he didn't like it and he slew his brother Abel. But Abel is a type of the death of the shepherd. Jesus is our shepherd. He was a good shepherd, great shepherd and chief shepherd. We'll say more about that later. As a good shepherd he gave his life for his sheep the Bible tells us. Then we take a look at the man Jacob and he is the one that cared for the sheep. Now, Abel died. He was a type of the uh, good shepherd dying for the sheep. And then we come to the man Jacob in the Old Testament. And he cared for the sheep. In Genesis chapter 30 and verse 31. And he said, what shall I give thee? And Jacob said, thou shalt not give me anything. If thou will do this thing for me, I will again feed and keep thy flock. Now, Jacob here is talking about keeping the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro. And so he was keeping his father's flock. Uh, maybe I missed that name, not Jethro. Moses the one kept the, the uh, flock of his father-in-law Jethro in the backside of the desert. Now Jacob kept the flock of his father-in-law and he watched after his sheep. He was a very good shepherd in his day and he cared for the sheep. He was concerned about them. And so he cared for them. Abel dying being a type of Christ. Jacob cared being type of the Lord Jesus Christ that cared for his sheep. Now the good shepherd loves his sheep and he cares for them. 
Now, if you're saved today, you're a sheep of God's pasture and the shepherd loves you. And that shepherd is the Lord Jesus and he cares for you. And he plainly tells you in the Bible to cast all your care upon him because he cares for you. Simon Peter wrote that, inspired by the Spirit of God. So he cares for you. There may be a time whenever you feel like nobody is concerned about me. Nobody cares for me. Seems I have no friends. I may be speaking to someone out in the radio listening audience. You despondent today because you feel like nobody really cares for you. Sometimes when people begin to grow old and the snow of ages settle upon their heads, they say, well, uh, my children, my grandchildren don't care for me anymore. I'm just kind of left alone. Nobody seems to care. But I have good news for you. Your shepherd cares. The Lord Jesus cares. He is your shepherd and he cares for you. And you must keep that in mind. Then we come to the third one, and that's Joseph. Now, Joseph fed the flock. Nabal died as a shepherd. Uh, we find Jacob kid for the sheep as a shepherd. But we find that Joseph fed the flock. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 37 and verse 2, These the generation of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren. Now, Joseph, being a shepherd lad, went out and fed the flock. He enjoyed feeding the sheep and watching them eat. Now, he's a type of our Lord that feeds us upon the Word. He is the bread of life, and we feed upon Him. Not only does He die for us, not only does He kill for us, but He feeds us, and God wants to feed His sheep. Now, if you don't graze in the wonderful Word of God, as a sheep should, you're not going to be a strong sheep. God wants you to be healthy. God wants you to be strong. God wants you to enjoy feeding up on the green grass of His Word. And Jesus will feed you if you'll read the book of God. God wants you to do so. So Joseph fed the flock. Then we come to number four, and that is Moses. Moses watered, protected, and guided the flock. So you see, he watered the flock. He protected the flock and he guided the flock. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 2 and verse 17, And the shepherds came and drove them away. But Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. Now when Moses left Egypt because of fear of Pharaoh, he left and went across into Midian. And there he stopped at a certain well. And some beautiful young girls came to water their flock. And the other people there at the well drove them away. So Moses just took over and, and watered their flock for him and helped them out. He watered the flock in time of need. Now they had paid no attention to those women. They could beg and plead and those men said, No, we're going to water our flock and our camels. We don't care whether you water yours or not. Moses didn't like that and he said, I'll see to it that your sheep get watered. And he drove the fellows away and, and watered their flock for them. So he watered them. And the water here is a type of the Spirit of God and the Word of God. And when the devil tries to keep you from being filled with the Spirit, a yield to the Spirit of God, a feeding upon God's Word, just say, get behind me, Satan, and continue to dive into the Word and, and drink from God's fountain of water and enjoy the blessings of God. Now Moses also protected and guided the sheep. The Bible says in Exodus chapter 2 and verse 17, And the shepherds came... And drove them away, but Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. Just what I mentioned a moment ago. And then in Exodus chapter 3 and verse 1, Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, and he led the flock, the Bible tells us. So he protected the flock and he led them. Now God will guide you and protect you. God loves his sheep. He's concerned about his sheep. And God will guide you along the way. What does that shepherd out there on the mountainside with that staff and, and crook out there. What's he doing out there with that hook and staff? He's out there to protect those sheep and lead them and guide them. A little uh, a sheep began to kind of wander away. He'll take that crook and, and bring him back or he'll take it and pull off some leaves off of the trees to feed him and so forth. If some animal should come up and try to harm one of those little sheep, he'll take that rod and beat him away. He's out there to protect those sheep because... He loves them and he protects them. And so we see here that Moses protected and guided the sheep. Those sheep have to be guided and they're guided by the shepherd. 
Then we come to another in the Old Testament, and that's David. Now, David jeopardized his life for the sheep. Here's a young man that really jeopardized his life to protect his father's sheep. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 34 through 36, And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock, and I went out after him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he rose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Now young David, in the name of the Lord, took on the bear and the lion when they came out and tried to kill the little lambs of the sheep of his father's flock. He took them out of their mouths, and there he killed the animals. He did that in the name of the Lord. He told Saul he did. Because he was talking about engaging Goliath in combat, and Saul said, aren't you afraid to go down there and, and engage that big old giant and confront him down there, bellowing and yelling and cursing Israel? David said, I'm not afraid to go. He said, my God's able to deliver him into my hands. He said, God delivered me out of the paw of the bear and the mouth of the lion, and we spared uh, my father's sheep and, and said, the same God that delivered me in those days can deliver me when I face Goliath. I'd like to say to you today, if you haven't conquered your bear and your lion, you better lay off of Goliath. You see a lot of people that try to do big things and want to be show and do great things for God and can't even conquer the little habits and things they have in the life that shouldn't be there. Now you conquer the bear and the lion and then you can march out with confidence and take on Goliath. If you don't, conquer the bear and the lion, whatever it is in your life, then you better watch out. You can't take on the giant. Now you need to conquer those things that hinder you spiritually, whatever it is. Now David jeopardized his life. Now he had to face that lion and face that bear, and he did it in the name of the Lord. And then we find number six, the idol shepherd. That's not left out by any means in the word of God. That's a shepherd known as the idol shepherd. The Bible says in Zechariah chapter 11, verses 15 through 17, And the Lord said unto me, Take unto thee yet the instruments of a foolish shepherd. For lo, I will raise up a shepherd in the land, which shall not visit those that be cut off, neither shall he seek the young ones, and heal those that are, that are broken, nor feed those that, that stand as steel. But he shall eat the flesh of the fat, and tear their claws in pieces. Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock, and the sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye. Now, this idol shepherd here is none other than the Antichrist that's coming on the scene. You know, when the Antichrist comes on the scene, he's going to pose as the true shepherd. He's going to try to make people believe that he's the true shepherd and deceive multitudes. Now, that idol shepherd is coming. I don't know who he is, neither do you. But he's coming. That's a great possibility he's alive today. The church won't know who he is. The Bible tells us in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 that... He won't be manifested until we're taken out of the way. And then he will come into power. That's a great possibility that he's alive today. I believe that. I believe the spirit of the Antichrist is very prevalent in the land today. You know, the spirit of the Antichrist is a spirit of, um, of opposition, uh, a spirit of opposing, a spirit of self-willism. In the book of Daniel, it says he's a self-willed individual. That spirit is very prevalent in our homes and schools and colleges and in our nation today, you have a lot of young people. They say, well, I'm going out with a crowd. I don't care what mom and daddy has to say about it. I'm going to do my thing and I'll go out and do what I will to do. There's thousands and thousands of children, young people disappearing in America today. And nobody never hear from them because they were self-willed. They wouldn't obey their parents. They wouldn't obey the law of the land. And they ended up in death, no doubt, or somewhere enslaved and and it's pathetic now self-willism is the spirit of the antichrist it's in the home young people rebelling against their parents and saying well i want to go with the crowd and mom and daddy don't want me to do so and you don't want to listen to your parents that's the spirit of the antichrist you have it in your schools today back when i was a young boy uh somebody in the schoolhouse tried to strike the teacher i do today what some young people try to do toward their teachers, brother. They'd apply the Board of Education to see the knowledge so hard and strong. You'd have to stand up for a week before you'd be confident sitting down again. But we're living in a day when the spirit of the Antichrist is prevalent in our schools, 
in our colleges. You have people demonstrating, marching up and down the streets, beloved. And, uh, many of them communists and, and many of them dope addicts and drunks and, and opposing the law of the land. That's the spirit of the Antichrist. And I believe the Antichrist is alive today because his spirit is so prevalent in the land. That's the idol shepherd. Then we come to the good shepherd, number seven. And the good shepherd is the Lord Jesus Christ. Never been a greater shepherd than Jesus. The Bible says in John chapter 10 and verse 11, I am the good shepherd and the good shepherd giveth his life for his sheep. Now Jesus was that good shepherd in that he gave his life for his sheep. As the good shepherd, he knows his sheep, the Bible says in John chapter 10 and verse 14. As the good shepherd, he provides for the sheep in John chapter 10 and verse 9. As the good shepherd, he guides the sheep, the Bible tells us. As a good shepherd, he gives his life for the sheep in John 10, 15. As a good shepherd, he lights in, the, in his uh, sheep, the Bible tells us. And so he's the good shepherd. Now, Jesus Christ is that good shepherd. I read a story one time about a man. It was his job to uh, slit the throat of sheep and tear these sheep into the slaughter. They had to uh, kill them and dress them that they might sell the mutton. And, and it was this man's job to take that sheep and and cut his throat. And this man said, you know, I picked up a beautiful little lamb and had it in my arm. And I went out to get my sharp knife and to cut that little uh, lamb's throat. And said, that little thing looked up with, to me, toward me with those innocent eyes. And then he reached out and, and licked the hand that I had the knife in. And he said, I just couldn't do it. He said, I just couldn't cut that little lamb's throat to save my neck. I, I just had to give up my job. I just couldn't do it. Now, beloved, God loves his sheep. They tell me that a shepherd, as he watches his sheep during the day, eats one of those sheep, one at a time, will approach that shepherd individually, and that shepherd will pat that sheep on his head or rub it and pet it a little bit. It'll go back to the rest of the flock. It won't be long until another sheep will come, and that good shepherd will pat it and love it a little bit. It goes back to the flock. Until every one of those, each one individually approach that shepherd sometime during that day to get his love and attention. That's the way our Lord is toward us. It grieves the heart of God when you go day in and day out and never take any time off to be with the Lord. Or to meditate or get on your knees or get into the book of God or, or be with God's people just running hither and thither and taking no time out for the Lord. You ought to go to God every day. And have some close fellowship with the Lord every day. Let him pat you on the head as it were. Let him put his hands on you as it were. And then go out and, and serve him. God desires that. You know your children. They come to you. And especially grandparents. Now uh, maybe the younger parents might not uh, be uh, quite as enthused as the grandparents are. Whenever the little ones come and jump up in their laps. And I remember when I was a. Uh, my first children came along. I didn't want them taking my pencil out of my pocket and pulling my watch off my arm and things like that. I'd just sit them down and say, I'll run out and play and go see your mama. But when my grand youngins came along, they crawled up my lap, pulled out my pencil, got my little uh, book and uh, pulled off my watch and, and I just let them have to say it. Now, I reckon why that happens. Well, somebody said the best way to raise your, your grand youngins anyway is shoot their grandparents. And you know why they call them grand, don't you? And somebody said, if they'd have known their grandchildren had been so grand, they wish they'd have come first. But uh, that's the way it happens. And you that haven't experienced any of these things, why, uh, you, your day's coming. Brother Brock has a fine, handsome grandson over here, and he's tickled about that. I believe you said that's your oldest, didn't you, Brother Brock? That's fine. I have eight. I got as many as Noah had in the ark. And we're proud of all of them and love them all. And so uh, something about those, uh, gra those grandchildren can just get next to grandma and grandpa and they'll do things for them. Somebody said uh, the grandchild goes to mother and mother says no, then go to grandmother. You'll take care of the situation. Now I'm not putting any meanness in you young as ears. Now I'm just telling you what I heard. It might work out all right. I just, I know what mama still do for her grand youngins. And so it happens that way. Now a good sheep, Jesus was a good shepherd in death. John chapter 10, verse 11. Secondly, he's a great shepherd in the resurrection. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, 
through the blood of the everlasting covenant. He's a chief shepherd in his second coming. And 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 4. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, you shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. So Jesus was a good shepherd in death. He's a great shepherd in our great high priest, as our great high priest. He shall be the chief shepherd when he appears at his second coming. Oh, how we thank God for our great shepherd. And I thank God that I'm one of the sheep of his pasture. And I can go to my shepherd, my Lord, and talk to him and be near him at any time I desire. You can do likewise. And you should do likewise. They should never a day go by without you getting close to the shepherd and having some communion and fellowship with him. And he'll bless you and help you. I want to say just a word or two about the sheep as I bring my message toward a close. Seven things about a sheep I want to mention hurriedly. Number one, a sheep in the Bible is known as a clean animal. Now God wants his people to be clean. God wants a clean vessel. Now God wants a vessel meat for the master's use. And God wants you to be clean. Your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost. God wants you to be a clean, clean Christian. Number two, a sheep is a harmless animal. Even a little child can walk up and pat a sheep on his head. Now, you might not be able to do a goat that way. Now, if you start up and try to pat a goat on the head, you'll probably end up uh, riding his horns. But you can uh, uh, pat a sheep. A little child can go up. They're very gentle and harmless. They won't hurt a child. And God's people should be that way. We should be harmless and, uh, and not be uh, the type of person to try to hurt or damage someone at all times. Number three, a sheep helpless in time of warfare. Did you know a sheep doesn't have much to fight with? It is so helpless whenever uh, if it had to fight off uh, another animal, a wolf or a lion. It just, it's just caught. Now it's helpless in time of warfare. And so is the people of God without the help of the Lord. You're no match for the devil. You're helpless whenever the devil attacks you without the help of God. And God can help you to overcome the devil and resist the devil. And great is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Number four, a sheep is gentle. God wants us to be gentle and kind and, and have a, a loving heart and have the right attitude. That's the way God wants us to be. Many times we're not, but that's the way God wants us to be. He wants us to be gentle and kind, one toward another and tender-hearted. Number five, a sheep's entirely dependent upon the shepherd. Over there in the Middle East, I've oftentimes seen those sheep out there, and they depend entirely upon that shepherd. They look to that shepherd for water to lead them to the still waters. They look to the shepherd to lead them to the green grass. They look to the shepherd to protect them from the coyotes and the lions and the dogs and whatever might attack them. They depend upon the shepherd. And you as a child of God must depend upon your shepherd. Now man might let you down, but not God. You depend upon your shepherd. The great shepherd, the great high priest will take care of his own. Number six, a sheep is characterized by a proneness to wonder. Now those sheep out there around that shepherd on the side of the mountain there, if, if, if every once in a while uh, one of them will kind of wander off, wander off, and just keep on going away from the other uh, group. Now if that shepherd didn't call it by name, I'll send the shepherd dog after it. That sheep would just keep on going and going and going without any sense of return. The Bible said we're all like sheep. We have gone astray. We have turned everyone unto our own way. And God caused a strike on him our sins. Now, beloved, listen. We are prone to wander away from the shepherd. Wander away. And so that shepherd watches after his sheep and brings it back. You remember in the book of Luke 15 where the shepherd went up in the mountains and found one sheep up there and put it on his shoulders and brought it back in. It's characterized by its proneness to wonder. We have sheep today, members of this church, sitting at home right now. They know they're disobedient. They know they're not doing what God wants them to do. They have wandered away from God. They put up some kind of excuse, but it's not acceptable in God's sight. And they know it's wrong. And they know they should be in God's house today, but they have wandered away. I don't know what it'll take to bring them back in, but God has a staff and a crook, and he knows how to bring them back in. And sooner or later, he'll drag them back in. 
and it might hurt when he does so. And then finally, a sheep is a useful animal. When you see a sheep, you look at, at a useful animal. You can take his wool and make clothing. You can take his food and eat it. It's a useful animal. It's not an animal straying around out there that's no good. And God wants his sheep to be a useful people. Oliver Green said if he had an automobile, it had as many useless parts in it, that you had useless church members, the thing would run downhill. And beloved, we need to realize God wants a useful people, people he can use and be worth something to him in this life. Don't fool around and waste your life and waste your time. Be useful and let God use you as you sojourn. You'll be glad you did ere you come to the end of life's journey. Thank you kindly. You listen well. God bless you. Stand to your feet. Our Father, I pray today that you'll make us better sheep of thine and help us, our God, to follow the shepherd wherever he leads us. Bless thy people today. Thank you for them. Use this message in this auditorium and also out in the vast radio listening audience. Dear God, Lord, if there's somebody here in this auditorium today that's not saved, they're not a sheep of your pasture. God, I pray that you so shake them up and so disturb them till they have to get right with thee. I pray in Christ's name. Amen. Now, Debbie is going to play for us on the organ as she plays. If you're in this building unsaved or backslidden, uh, you want to join this church, for any reason you feel like you need to come down here and let us help you pertaining to any problem or anything, I want you to come while we wait. You know whether or not you should come. If God is speaking, obey the Lord. That's all I ask you is obey God. Do what you know you should do. Would you do it while we wait? people. Chief Shepherd shall appear and it may be soon. How about it while we wait? 